One last thing I want to talk about with the with regards to the ideal gas law is units. Uh, units are very important throughout chemistry, uh, and the ideal gas law is no exception to this. This is a great place to start and practice with that. Um, you've already done that in other chemistry classes you've taken, but um, this is a good chance to, to keep that in mind. Right, so if we think about the units or, or the quantities that we're measuring in terms of the ideal gas law, we have P, V, N, R, T, right? Those are our different variables that go in. And for pressure, um, there's not really a pressure unit that everybody uses for everything. So there's the um, SI unit of Pascal. Um, and almost nobody I know that actually measures pressures uses this unit. <laughs> um, you know, it's defined as a newton per square meter, but it just is not terribly useful. Uh, most pressure um, readings are not measured in Pascals. So more often you'll see tor, uh, which, or which is also known as millimeters of mercury because it corresponds to um, the, the height of a column of mercury that's supported by a certain pressure. Uh, so that's one that shows up. We also have bar, which is closer to the SI unit. Uh, so it's based on Pascals, but it's 10 to the fifth Pascals. Um, so that makes it more useful because atmospheric pressure is roughly one bar. Not exactly, but, but close. And then, of course, there is the unit of the atmosphere, right, which is defined in terms of atmospheric pressure, where one atmosphere is one uh, and one bar is close, but not exactly equal to one atmosphere. OK, so these are just some of the units that show up. Uh, for volume, we can have different units that show up. The most common by far is liters. Um, but you can also have cubic centimeters, um, cubic decimeters. Well, these are the same. A liter and a cubic decimeter are the same thing. Um, and then you could have other things like milliliters or whatever that, that are derived from these. Um, N is uh, always in moles, so that one's easy. And then T, of course, we can use, we have lots of different units for temperature that are commonly used. Um, in the United States, we are familiar with degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we almost never use this in scientific uh, scientific use, but you know, if you're talking about the temperature outside, you'll do it in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, degrees Celsius is much more commonly used, but almost always we want to use Kelvin. Right, the absolute temperature scale. And then I've left out R uh, because basically the way R functions in the ideal gas law is it's a way to match all the units together. You, you need to pick the right value of R that matches all the different units you have uh, for everything else. So depending on how you measure everything, uh, different values of R could be more or less useful. Um, I find the table on Wikipedia for the gas constant to be really useful. Um, so this is it right here, if I can paste it in. Oh, it's not working. Okay, it won't let me paste it from my notes over here. Well, what I'll do instead is we'll just pull up that Wikipedia table. All right, so if we go to ideal gas constant. All right, open up the Wikipedia page. Um, this, this over here on the right um, shows you, I'll go ahead and zoom in on it. All right, so this over here shows you R in many different values. So we have SI units. So these all give it as the same as 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. Uh, that's one you use a lot in this class. Um, because uh, the other units will work out to a joule, um, which you can you can also write as cubic meter pascal per mole per kelvin or kilogram meter squared per second squared per kelvin per mole. Um, and all of these will, will cancel out with, with commonly used SI units. Um, other units you can have atmosphere cubic foot pound mole per degree Rankin, <laughs> which is basically de uh, degrees Fahrenheit uh, it's like Kel it's like Kelvin, but for degrees Fahrenheit. It's an absolute scale, so zero Rankin. Uh, so this is uh, commonly used in engineering in the United States. Uh, the ones we'll use more often are down here. So we have liter Pascal per Kelvin per mole, um, which is 8,314. Liter bar, liter atmosphere, liter tor, kilocal, uh, cubic meter atmosphere, right, erg. So you can see there's lots of different um, 
values of the gas constant that are possible to use. Um, the key is to pick the one that is useful for what you are measuring. Uh, so that's the real key. Um, so final takeaway message about the ideal gas law. In terms of results that you'll get from the ideal gas law, um, the values that you calculate the ideal gas law are, are quite good actually at normal conditions for, for things that we uh, that are normally gases. Right, so ideal gas law is good under normal conditions and if you don't need a highly precise number it's good enough for most things that you're going to do. And you know, just as remind what those normal conditions are, we talked about you know the assumptions that go into this. Those normal conditions are going to be fairly high temperatures, fairly low pressures. So one thing we'll look at in this class is when does that break down, uh, and how can we um, you know understand the deviations that are happening and correct for them. Uh, so we'll we'll look at that when we look at real gas behavior, right? So how do gases actually behave versus this ideal behavior where we make these assumptions about um, that we know aren't true. Um, on a fundamental level, that the gas particles take up no volume and that there's no interactions between them. We know that's not true, uh, but under most conditions, they are negligible and we, we get pretty good results. And always that awkward part at the end of the video where I gotta find the stop button.